Welcome to Raw Hollow. Uh, but before we get into that, I guess I might ask you a bit more of a question. As um, as a spearman and also someone who knows a decent bit about guitars, how do you think the weapon? Explain to me a little bit more about how the weapon cycle might. Uh, kind of impact the results in this. If Guichibo is on cannon, then what is Impala for? If Impala is on bow, then what is Guichibo looking for? What do you think, if they're both trying to constantly play rock, paper, scissors, or do you think one of them has a set weapon that they know will probably count to the other a bit better? Um, definitely, um, I would favor the spear in this matchup because just like cannon is kind of bad in the sword, it's the same way cannon can struggle against spear as well. You know, that inlay is a great zoning tool, and cannon, a lot of the time, the player has to launch themselves, launch their hitbox into you, and that's very risky. And spear is, you know, a very safe weapon, so if you can inlay them away that whole time, it's going to give you a better chance of winning the game. But, like we see Goichibu doing, you can always do those weapon throws to kind of throw off your opponent. But, I would definitely favor Spear here. Bow is definitely a good option too, you know. Space out your opponent. We got down airs and B lights and, ooh, reverse sayers coming out from Impala. But, um, it seems like Kayak just has a pretty good matchup into um, Lin Fei. But, you know, when you're at such a high level, matchups aren't the biggest thing you should be worried about here. Oh, side air is going to send Impala way off the screen, but Guichibu cannot confirm that kill yet. Ground Pound is going to confirm it though, and Guichibu going up with a slight lead against Impala in Game 1. Winner, Simi. Impala shoving Guichibu off the side of the stage. Guichibu is about to answer back, doesn't quite find this here to KO to increase this lead. And the lead goes up in smoke. Still not a bad damage lead. It's definitely a place you'd rather be than a di uh, a, a dead tight even game. Right. Uh, but still, Impala is able to even out that damage lead and might be on the cusp of making one of his own. Impala, that end sig, that would have been huge. Kai's signature is very powerful, able to send quite far. Also would have been good to kind of reset back to neutral, say like, okay, you know, get off me. I'm going to sh shove you aside and I'm going to give myself a little bit more room to think. Guichibo still trying to find his way in. Impala on bow. Oh, the he was just a weapon star of Guichibo. Would have found the KO, but Guichibo almost Almost finds a KO of his own and continues to dig for it until he finds that side signature. Impala touching down onto last stock, just like what a minute into this game? Yeah, just around around a minute and a half to two minutes. Definitely, definitely the pace is accelerated in this game. Just like I said earlier. We're seeing Guichibu really get in and on Impala with those guitars, and once guitars are on you, it's hard to get them off. Inlight into Ground Pound's not going to connect, and we just have Impala looking for this knockout here. On the contrary, we have Guichibu looking for that extra credit. Side light, D light, side air is definitely going to send Guichibu off the screen and tie up the stocks one to one with just a little bit of mustard on Impala's stock, as we can say. Guitars and bow in hand. We're looking for some more damage. Definitely see Impala coming out with those nares and side airs, catching Guichibu out in the air. Another nair is going to send Guichibu high up, but you have to be cognizant of Guichibu's recoveries and nares too to counter those air attacks coming out from Impala. And we're seeing like very, very even hit exchange going on here. Like Impala gets a hit, then Guichibu gets a hit. Then Impala gets a hit, and then Guichibu gets a hit. You know, these, these players, despite their PRs being different, are very, very closely matched. Recovery's gonna put some more damage onto Impala here. The Tars are out. Ooh. Guichibu gonna get hit by a Sysic, yeah. and that's actually gonna kill. So that's going to set one. Wait, this is game two, right? I'm pretty sure it's just game one. Oh, this is game one. Dang. It's so much happened. <laughs> so much happened, I thought it was game two. That's gonna put Impala up one in the set. The first half of that game moved very quickly, but the mm -hmm. second half of that game really started to slow down, and I think that's where we start to see kind of some of uh, Guichibo's armor start to crack a little bit as Impala found his way in, and Guichibo was like, wait, no, 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 this isn't, this isn't what I wanted. Three, two, so one, Impala is going to have to try and continue that aggression on Apocalypse, and Guichibo is definitely going to have to try and adapt. We could be seeing the cannon come out a little bit more since Guichibo kept finding his way in, in with the guitars and found some pretty good opportunities, found some pretty good openings. I feel like the range.
range and the priority of the cannon might also be pretty good for the times he kind of wants to keep the game a little bit slow, just like you said with Spear. How Paul is able to play uh, some attacks with Spear pretty safe. There are some moves like Sidelight, like Sare, like Dare, like Nair that really place you and your opponent pretty far away from each other. Safe options. Maybe Beachbow might want to kind of throw out some of those. Side Sig not quite going to be the safest option, but an N Sig would have been a draw dropping one nonetheless. Turns out to be a dare to revoke each of first star for five seconds. And Impala doing a bit of a bot walk. And uh, Reachabo able to snag guitars despite Impala's best efforts to weapon starve. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Guichabo right now. During Impala's set with Dark Nova, we did say that they, the two of them don't really have that much matchup advantage. But part of the reason we talk about the history of these two players is because they do have a lot of matches fought against each other. There was probably a mm -hmm. point in time where they played each other constantly in ranked. This is winner's finals of so many community events last yeah. year, <laughs> especially around this time last year, but both of their careers have taken them to very, very different spots in the road. So this is, it's kind of cool to see them reunite here in the same spot they probably would have anyways, like last year in a PXL. Yeah, definitely really good players, you know, being consistent, and what's important here is that they're both consistently improving, so I think it's always super cool to see someone who used to fight against a bunch in such a high and, you know, high octane competitive setting, and we're seeing just, just like, super erratic gameplay from both players, you know, it's, it's not slow, it's fast, and a hit for hit, you know? And uh, like Impala's answering with hits and Gucci Blue answering with hits, gonna find their way around that D6 Kaya. Ground Pound's not gonna connect, just barely gonna get a dodge. Ground Pound from Impala is gonna come out, sending Gucci Blue all the way to the other side of the stage. Down here, it's gonna kind of gonna clash with the weapon throw and Impala, but it's gonna send <laughs> Gucci Blue down into the depths into their last stock in this game too. Okay, Cannon is a very careful. We did say that Cannon is able to find some very good KOs. He is able to snag one. He had a very difficult time finding some KOs during his set with Meg D, but is having slightly less difficulty with uh, his set with Impala right here. That is also nice read. Oh my goodness gracious! Oh my God, GC, do you like to get back? Of that? Wow, I thought I thought Impala was like I was like, how do you finish this here? I, I thought it was done. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's, it's, it just shows how good this player who thinks to be GC like, and it hits, so we uh, Impala got a chase dodge to come back. Um, but we're seeing Impala with the damage lead in this game too right now. Um, Guichibu fighting, hitting, trying to even that up. It's going to be orange to red right now. Side air is coming out from Impala, and Impala's looking for that knockout. They don't want to risk losing this game too. Gonna pick up the spear. We all know side airs and recoveries are vicious knockout tools. Ooh, Inza comes out, but Ichibu is definitely gonna stop that from happening. Cannon in hand. D6 not gonna connect. D light Nair. Both players are on red right now, but we know how much defense Kaya has. D light Dare. Can Ichibu confirm D -Light this? <laughs> Missed the side air. Oh, ground pounds. Got a little bit too greedy. Will we be seeing the Sakurai come out to play and try and keep his uh, racket life just a little bit longer? But this is still all very. Yeah, no, that is unfortunate to see. It gets too hungry, it's so dips too far down. Didn't quite choke anything. Didn't quite like, oh, just lose one in direction neutral. Just got a little bit too, maybe even a little bit too confident. We chose ability to not really crack. And just like we said, as a mental proven a lot but did that come with a cost we don't see the sakurai coming out it's still the same uh masculine fey skin that we have seen him play on oh so many times but guichimo also still having some very promising play as um impala's last opponent dark nova on cannon had a very very hard time finding the ko's they would be chasing around uh each they would be chasing each other around the stage for what felt like hours when dark uh, impala would be on red and dark nova was just fishing for the KO and we were all waiting for it to connect. Guichibo has not been having that problem. Knows his way around Kaya defense and speed. Knows his way around Impala footwork and just knows his way around Cannon's options. He's always able to just 
pluck something out of thin air. We've seen some pretty nasty gravity cancels and connects, not only during the Meg D set, but also come alive a little bit during this set too. He's hoping to make this not the last game in the set. Apollo wants to say otherwise. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing Glitch Boot get some of these reads out on Apollo, and um, it's very like essential to get reads on this character, Lin Fei, because of how little damage she can do sometimes. It can also be kind of difficult to knock out if you can't land that D-Light on Canyon, so Glitch Boot is just finding um, his way into Impala, and Impala on, on the other side of things is doing a spectacular job of just spacing Glitch Boot oh. out and getting away from that are the validity that each of them has. I'm gonna hit it with a recovery. GCT light's not gonna connect. Side air is coming out. In light connects from Guichibu. Insect is actually going to kill on this mm. very looks like it's kind of a high ceiling map of small uh, fortress opponents. This game three. Guichibu nares and Paolo to the weapon pickup, picking up bow. Paula is wanting to play a bit more spear this set, but we've definitely seen a decent bit more bow, so not a complete... <gasps> oh, wait, no, the dare gave him another jump back! Ooh, another jump chase that jump proper! Of knowing that he had to try and touch the wall! That is some... That's some, because neither of those clash. I think Paula was hoping that one of those dares would clash, but Weechibo was patient, not cracking under pressure, saying, like, no, I'm not doing that. And Paula just said, you know, okay, I gotta end this eventually, and we gotta touch the edge. So the place is gonna pound perfectly. Mm -hmm. As those dares kept giving him jumps, when you get hit, I'm pretty sure you get another jump, at least depending yeah. on what the hit is. Depending on what the hit is, you get another jump. Yeah, and we saw um, some great offstage play right there, and now we're just seeing um, some... It really just boils down to you can play neutral better right here. Pichibu seems like he's getting a bit more hits in the neutral, but they're both playing very similar paced games, as I was gonna say that the damage is even, but the game is still very close. Pichibu is gonna be up with a slight damage lead, and Paula... Um, uppercut is going to reduce that damage and even more, but Guichibu coming in with those guitars, trying to get some of that extra credit before they go out. Oh my god, and it's stacking up with those guitars. Downsick doesn't connect, and Paula trying to fight their way back on stage. D6 does not connect. D6 did not connect from him. Guichibu either. And then Paula's just fighting for that knockout. Um, Paya is also not the strongest character either, so it's kind of hard to knock him out sometimes, especially on a map that's kind of big. Weechibu just pressuring with Qatar is not dead yet. Still put on that damage. Oh GC D Light near above the platform is finally gonna knock out Weechibu. Oh, just like we have said many times, has his work cut out for him. Just needs to do a little damage. I think we're already starting to see that really kind of start to come through. And then find the KO option is digging with these guitars to try and get Impala as close to red as impossible. Every single time he puts himself into, um, every time he's, every single time he puts himself into Impala's threat ranges. That side sick, not quite good. Impala is just a little bit more time to try and bring Guichibo down to orange, but an NSYNC gonna let Guichibo survive just a little bit longer. Although that might have been a little bit too close for comfort. Will we be going back to the same map? Impala leaves Apocalypse on the, never mind. Bans Apocalypse actually. Doesn't even want to risk it. Impala is up 2-1 in the set and has won on Apocalypse multiple times, but does not even want to risk losing on it a second time. Yeah, because this this, you know, the reverse three is always real, man. And this is why I think game two it can be like the scariest game in a set because either um, you win game two and like, okay, I advance on to the next match or like it's over, right? Or you lose game two and you're like, okay, maybe my opponent is starting to like adapt to me and then you don't want to go to a game five. So game two is all very super always important. And wow, Ooh, I'm surprised it didn't It's not, kill. it's over. DC does not, DC just barely does it hit. Oh my God. It's not this Jover. Fighting, <laughs> fighting for hits, fighting for damage, you know, characters with low strength, but crazy fast movement. Um, I'm really, really happy to see the way that, like, Wichibu seems like they're controlling the game, but Impala is just able to, you know, adapt. That's really what it's coming down to. Impala is adapting to the playstyle of Wichibu right now. 
and is uh, able to you know, usually close out these games in their favor. Cannon is out, Spear is out. Oh, they do. Air Temple on the map pool. Might have. Yeah, no, Guichibo was not falling for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Has Guichibo got hit by that this set? Yeah, I feel I like Guichibo stares so. him At least not the way that Impala just kind of like cocks back and charges it up. The way he's able to catch some people with it. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think Guichibo has been uh, kind of caught by that little mental game. But still, I think oh my Impala God, leaving uh, Western Air Temple on the map pool. I'm. Kind of now questioning that choice because look at this lead. Impala is getting to a pretty good spot to even it out, but still, voice crack aside, Guichibo's <laughs> aggression is looking so much better this game. And it's not really kind of choking up on himself. He's not saying, like, okay, you know, I'm behind. What do I do? He's still playing, if anything, more confident and bold than ever. And is kind of, uh, he's really activating this, um, adrenaline incident, I guess. Oh my college. god, that sure. hit hard. As that D-Sig. That killed. Guichibo, yeah, Guichibo knows not to chase people who have kind of already lost their stock. Does not give Apollo a chase dodge or an extra jump. Doesn't even throw the weapon down! Because that might have given him Apollo an extra jump to make it back to stage. Just let him fall and watches, like, uh, that one movie, Lion King. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. I mean, don't chase dead people, you know, because they turn to zombies and then they kill you. So, <laughs> very good downsig. I was really surprised at that. Oh, you know, Linfei downsigs it hard. I mean, I'm sure we all know that. <laughs> Reacher knows how to use him. He's yeah, an facts. expert of him. One of his best expert of the character. The one of the best kits in the tool, too. Yeah, no, it's okay. No one heard it. <laughs> move on. We're just gonna move on. Insigs out. Uh, we're seeing Wichibu. I feel like so far this game, he's been using the best of like Tars and Ken. It doesn't seem like as a Lin Fei player, he favors like he's a guitar player or he favors a Ken. Like, he's kind of got he's a well-rounded um, Lin Fei. Man. I'd love to see that, just like Impala is on both weapons too. <laughs> so it's once again it's, it's like the mastery of the character, man. D Light Recovery is going to send Wichibu flying off the top right corner of the screen and evening up the stock still Gucci Boo has a uh, I say a pretty significant damage lead on Impala right now and it's gonna fight for this KO in game three so that might, maybe they can have a fighting chance to try to make, bring a game five or something. Although Gucci Boo has a decent damage lead doesn't quite have the read of uh, read on Impala and is also respecting the bow knowing that you know like bow covers a lot of space Katar might kind of struggle to find its way into bow they both cover a lot of the uh, similar areas like diagonals uh, but bow just has a lot more range and he's a bit more priority since it can be pretty disjointed so knows to respect the bow at least until he's able to get cannon which I mean listen are we talking about cannon tail potential so much like here now more so than ever Guichibo takes game four away from an Apollo we got ourselves in game five. Oh yes I am so excited to see this game five because this it like call me crazy but they just seem so evenly matched like, it's it's just hit for hit it really is hit for hit like yeah for real <laughs> and it's, it's, it's so exciting so and now Everything is on the line, like the coveted spot of winners, right? You, no one wants to go into the lower Three, bracket two, uh, seven, you have all the sharks four. swimming down there. And when you're in winners, you have another chance, right? When you're in losers, you have no chance. So we're going to see these um, players fight tooth and nail to keep this winner's spot and to advance on to the next part of the tournament. We're seeing a complete run back of, I believe, was it... Was it game one that they played Small Fortress of Lions? I know they played on this map before, but same characters, same color scheme, same weapons. And uh, just going going straight back at it, you know? It's been, it's been a good couple of games. It just comes down to whoever can um, get more hits and confirm those knockouts. That seems like the biggest problem between both of these players. Sometimes it's really hard to find a knockout, and the low strength of these characters is no help with that either. Another small thing that I want to highlight, and at the end of that game, we usually see Guichibo when like he knows that he was won a game, do it like a like we said earlier, so a celebratory ground pound or neutral signature, saying like, oh, I won, we do something cool for freeze frame. Guichibo <laughs> did a recovery expecting to return to stage and was not celebrating early, was trying to get himself ready in case Paul was able to get back to stage. And 
Although it was pretty ready for that D light and air, it was not gonna kill. not kill, that's dead. crazy. Even game a little bit more than eight nice, minutes Jesus, nice in game. is Guichabo able to find the first stock. But yeah, Guichabo, I think is really fully locked in and accepted. It's not over, or it, uh, over, no. It's it's not Jover until it's Jover. <laughs> and I should really never celebrate too early. And that's always something I kind of <gasps> players. I, yeah, I know, that side sake into punishing with the combo. He is on another level, double D sake. No, nice, no, no. nice, see, patience. DC, yeah, we don't usually see D-Sig uh, followed up by ground pound. It's always kind of usually a, a double D-Sig from Guichibo, but yeah, just that little small little moment. Players, sometimes I like to celebrate early, but when a player doesn't celebrate and always gets back to stage, no matter how likely it is that their last move KO'd and that they are always ready to keep going, I like seeing that in players. Guichibo is mm -hmm. always ready for their next hit. Yeah, definitely, and uh, Wichibu is always putting hits onto the next player because of how ready they are to um, execute those, and we're seeing Impala kind of, you know, we never, you know, Impala's stock too is kind of a different, you know, a different player, you know, like now, okay, we've analyzed how stock one has gone, and now we're going to play accordingly as stock two, like we're seeing that right now, Impala's almost completely evened up the damage, is doing a crazy weapon start right now, keeping Guichibu in the air. Guichibu is looking for a weapon because you know they want to respect that bow. Yes, the guitar is going to go in with a down air, but side light is going to connect. He like does not follow. And we're just, you know, building up damage. Both players Ooh. are in the red now. Ooh, now. Now this is what I'm talking about. How, like, how do we KO here? What's, what's the plan to KO? <laughs> There was like God. four different options that came out at that one moment. Just to get a peek into these players' mental, the loser of this game is almost top four. The winner of this game is definitely top four. Guaranteed top four if you win this set. And it's a game five. You guys have played four games. This is the fifth game. Someone has to win. Someone has to come out on top. Who is it going to be? It's looking really good in Impala's favor because of the damage there, but we never know what Bichibu can do. We know they're an extremely explosive player. He's gonna dodge that insect coming out. A lot of whiffing going on. GC Sysic unexpectedly is gonna send Impala down to their last stock. We, both of our players, are on their last stock. Game five. We have seen him come back from gutter deficiencies, but Impala on the spear into Guichibo's guitars. It all depends, like you said earlier, if he's able to find his way in Impala. No. Backdash for the end light. It kind of. We threw the weapon doesn't to block the ledge guard here. because of throw. Doesn't get the read. Impala's looking for some side, some side light, some side air, side light read, recovery, down really. six, so many options. But Guichibu has to get enough damage to get in politic knockout range first. These players have worked both so hard throughout this entire set. Someone has oh. to lose. And the unfortunate loser of this God. game is Guichibu gonna go down to the lower bracket. Wow! What a what a intense high caliber set. Shout out to both <laughs> players, you know, like you guys did crazy. That was that was action like through and through, but um, Impala is actually going to come out on top of that. Our PR1 player will be advancing to the winner's final.